السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه إن شاء الله we will continue uh, as we were doing on Tuesday night reading from الشمائل المحمدية uh, the book of Imam al-Tirmidhi that talks about the description of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inshallah today we will read hadith number 7 which is narrated by uh, Al-Hasan ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhumah the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who said سَأَلْتُ خَالِي هِنْدَ بْنَ أَبِي حَالَ that I asked uh, my uncle my maternal uncle Khal uh, Hind ibn Abi Hala. The last time we talked about who this person is, Hind ibn Abi Hala is the uh, stepbrother of Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. He is the son of Khadija radiallahu anha, but not from the Prophet sallallahu from a different uh, previous husband whose name was Abu Hala. So Sayyidah Khadija was married before she married the Prophet sallallahu twice actually. And one of her previous husbands, their name was Abu Hala, and she had two sons from him. One of them was called Hind. So Hind is the stepbrother of the daughters of the Prophet وسلم, including Sayyidah Fatima. So he is the stepbrother of Fatima, which would make him the uncle of Hassan, which is the son of Fatima and Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhum jami'an. Uh, so Hind uh, was a companion. He accepted Islam uh, with the Prophet ﷺ. He was part of his household and uh, was much older than uh, Fatima, uh, so much older than uh, uh, Sayyidina Hassan. Sayyidina Hassan is saying, I asked my uncle Hind ibn Abi Hala wa kana wa sahim. عن حلية النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنا أشتهي أن يصف لي منها شيئا أتعلق به He said that I asked my uncle Hind uh, who was a wafaf who was uh, very accurate and very precise in the way that he described the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم I asked him to describe to me the description of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم so why did he ask him? Well, because Hassan was very young when the Prophet ﷺ passed away. He was only seven years old. And Hind is someone who was much older. He had spent a lot of time with the Prophet ﷺ. But not only that, he was wasaf. He was very precise in the way that he used to describe the Prophet ﷺ. Very eloquent as well. And why did he want to know about the description of the Prophet ﷺ? Well, because he says, وَأَنْ أَشْتَهِ أَنْ يَصِفَ because I wanted him to describe to me something that I could hold on to, that I could feel connected to, which shows that the companions of the Prophet ﷺ weren't only interested in learning the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, not only his statements and actions, but even his person, his personality, inward and outward. The physical description of Rasulullah sallallahu They loved him so much that they wanted to know how he looked like. So that they could have a picture of him in their mind that they could feel attached to. Sayyidina Hassan is, is saying, I asked him to describe him to me. And this is the description of Hind ibn Abi Hala. It is one of the longest descriptions of the physical appearance of the Prophet We'll cover some of it today and the rest of it next time inshaAllah ta'ala. But this is how he begins. فَقَالَ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَخْمًا مُفَخَّمًا The first thing is that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he had sublime qualities. فَخْمًا He was an honorable person. He had honorable features, sublime qualities. But not just Fakhman, Mufakhama. Because somebody can be very sublime, but people don't regard them as such. People ignore their sublime qualities. People uh, dismiss their sublime qualities. 
He was Fasman Mufakhama. He was made honorable in the sight of people. In other words, people couldn't help but notice that he had these sublime qualities. Unless somebody just wanted to be arrogant and arrogantly refuse to acknowledge his sublime qualities, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him apparently and obviously sublime and honorable in the sights of people. So, Fahman Mufakhama. That his face would shine like the moon shines on the night when there's a full moon. His face would shine. There was a radiance that came from his face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now the narrator here, subhanAllah, they're being so precise. That they could have said, shone like the sun, and the sun is brighter than the moon. But they choose to describe the shine on his face like the moon, not the sun. Why? Because the sun is so bright you can't even see it. And if you look at it, it's painful to the eye. But when you look at the moon, it's pleasing to the eye. So this is the, the, the metaphor here is more suitable to be the metaphor of a full moon. أَطْوَلَ مِنَ الْمَرْبُوعِ وَأَقْصَرَ مِنَ الْمُشَذَّبِ That he was taller than the average man, taller than the average man, but shorter than someone who is extremely tall. And we've seen this before, that the Prophet ﷺ was basically a tall man, but he wasn't so tall that it would be odd. And he was definitely not short, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عظيم الهامة. Now a description of his head, صلى الله عليه وسلم, beginning with the size of the head. عظيم الهامة. He had a large head, a grand head. He didn't have a tiny head, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And which is a basically a sign of intelligence, especially in Arab culture of the time. رجل الشعر. Now some description of the hair on his head. Rajla Shah. He had hair that was slightly wavy. It was not completely straight and not extremely curly. Had a wave in it in his hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In infarakat aqiqatuhu arakaha. Wa illa fala. Yujawizu shaharuhu shahmata udunayhi ida huwa wa farahu. Hadihi riwaya. أو هذه قراءة قراءة أخرى إن انفرقت عقيقته فرقها وإلا فلا يجاوز شعره شحمة أذنه إذا هو وفره. There's two ways to read this. I'll just read it the first way, which is the more acceptable way according to most of the scholars, which means this basically. إن انفرقت عقيقته فرقها وإلا فلا. If his عقيقة now عقيقة is the not the عقيقة that we do when a child is born. But here, Atika means the hair that's uh, the front part of the head. Asha'aru ala nafiya. Not the hair on the top of the head or the back of the head or the side of the head, but the hair that's on the front of the head. Okay? Atika too. If his hair that's on the front of the head would part easily, he would part it. So what does that mean, part easily? Well, remember, desert. Uh, gets very dusty, very dry, water is not as readily available. People don't wash their hair all the time like we do. People didn't take shower every day like many of us do. Okay? So the hair when it's dry, it's not easy, it's not easy to part it. But when it's wet, when it's been recently washed, when it's very clean, it's easier to part. So, if it is a time of the week or a time of the day when his hair would easily part, he would part it. In infarqad aqiqatu farqaha wa illa fala. But if it was not easy to part, in other words, if it would require some effort, maybe wetting it with water, using a comb and stuff, then he would just leave it. He wouldn't part it. Now, a side note here. The Prophet ﷺ in different stages of his life had a different hairstyle. A different hairstyle. So according to the scholars, they say that when the Prophet ﷺ migrated to Medina first, when he first migrated to Medina, 
He did not used to part his hair. Even after he washes it, he would not part his hair. His hairstyle was not to have the, the line and part his hair. He would not part his hair. Deliberately he would do that. Why? Because the people of the book did not part their hair. Whereas the idol worshippers used to part their hair. And the Prophet ﷺ wanted to be different from the idol worshippers. And he wanted to draw the people of the book closer. So he copied their hairstyle. He imitated the Jews and the Christians in the early part of his life in Medina. But as time passed by and the Muslims became stronger, the Prophet ﷺ towards the later part of his life in Medina felt important that the Muslims now began to develop their own identity and they didn't have to copy anybody. And so he started to preach the Muslims to be different from the Jews and the Christians. And there's many ahadith about that, be different from the Jews and the Christians. This happened in the later part of the Madani life when the Muslims had gained strength and the Prophet ﷺ wanted to instill in them their own unique Muslim identity. And at that time he began to then part his hair to be different from the Jews and the Christians. Okay, and there's many lessons that we can learn from that, but this is not the time to do that. The point here is that if the Prophet ﷺ towards the later part of his life when he began to part his hair, if he would part easily, he would part it. Otherwise, he would leave it. And then he said, If he did not part his hair, if he let it be, then the, the locks of the hair would go just beyond the earlobes. They would hang down so much that they would just go past the earlobes, just go below the earlobes. Which means that if he did part his hair, if he did part his hair, then they would go beyond the earlobe down to his shoulders. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have talked about the length of his hair in other ahadith as well. And we've talked about how it would vary depending on whether he had recently shaved his head or not shaved his head in a long time. <coughs> Then he says, talking about his complexion, his skin color. Azhar al-lawn. Azhar al-lawn. Azhar. Like Imam Azhar. Right? Or like Jamiat al-Azhar. Azhar means uh, radiant. Radiant. He had a radiant complexion. That's what this narration says. In other narrations, we learn more about the color of the skin. That he had a rosy pink skin color. So it was not pale white, it was not brown or dark, it was fair skin, but not just pale white, it had a tinge of red in it. So it was rosy pink color and it had a radiant complexion, sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam. Then he says, wasi al jabeen. He had a wide forehead. Wasi al jabeen, a wide forehead. Azaj al hawajib. Now about his eyebrows. Azajjal hawajib. First, the shape of the eyebrows. Azajjal hawajib means that they are curved and long. Meaning not, not long every piece of hair being long, but the eyebrow itself extends, it has a long, it's long, wide, in other words. Wide, but not straight, curved, like, like a bow, like, like, a, like a, the curve of a bow. Azadjul hawajib. Sawabil min ghayri qaran. They are full eyebrows, in other words, they don't have hair missing, or very thin hair, no, full of hair. Full eyebrow, but they do not meet in the middle. Min ghayri qaran. They do not meet in the middle. There is a gap between the two eyebrows. But the gap is small. 
In fact, some of the other companions described him as having a brows that meet in the middle. But other companions clarified and they said actually they did not meet in the middle, but there was a, a, a light that shined on his face that if someone didn't look carefully, they would think that the eyebrows were meeting. But if somebody looked carefully, they would see that there was a gap, a small gap between the two eyebrows that were full and curved uh, on both eyes. سَوَابِغْ مِنْ غَيْرِ قَرَنْ بَيْنَهُمَا يَرْقٌ يُدِرُهُ الْغَضَبْ Between the two eyebrows, there was a vein that would become visible when the Prophet ﷺ would be angry. When he gets angry, the way that his face shows it is that the vein there becomes visible, becomes swollen. The Prophet was a very gentle human being, very forgiving, very forbearing, and we emphasize his gentleness a lot, and we should. However, to be complete, he also did used to get angry. And incidents are recorded in his seerah when he visibly became angry. And one such incident, there's several incidents, but basically he would only get angry lillah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One famous incident is when a woman stole, committed theft in Medina, her name was Fatima. She was a noble woman, came from a noble tribe. So the people of her tribe came to the Prophet ﷺ requesting that he does not apply the usual punishment of theft on this woman because she came from a noble family, but to apply a reduced punishment upon her. Upon that, the Prophet ﷺ became visibly angry. He went in front of the people and they said, he said to the people, you know, what is this? That when someone who comes from a low class, you want to apply the full punishment. But when somebody comes from a noble class, you want to reduce the punishment. By Allah, if even the Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad wasallam, had committed theft, I would have applied the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon her. So that's one of the incidents when the Prophet ﷺ was visibly angry. Not for him, for personal self, but for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the signs that he was angry was that this vein would become protruded. It would become visible. And then he says, أَقْنَ الْعِرْمِينَ لَهُ نُورٌ يَعْلُوهُ يَحْسَبُهُ مَنْ لَمْ يَتَأَمَّلْهُ أَشَمْ That now about his nose, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he has, he has a nose that is aqna. And the meaning of aqna, several things here in this one word. It means that he had a long nose, a long, sharp, thin nose, not a wide nose. The nostrils of his nose are not, are not wide. They are thin. And he has a long nose. And there is a slight... Uh, rise in the middle of his nose. So his nose is high in the middle. It rises slightly in the middle. So all of that is within the space. And there is a light that, that shines from his nose as well. And because of that light that shines from his from, from the you know, uh, from his face and his nose, the one who's not looking carefully would think that he has a large nasal bridge. You know, the bridge upon which our eyeglasses rest? This is a nasal bridge. One would think that there is, th- th- this is large and it is, it is sticking out. But it's not sticking out. It's the light that emanates from it that makes it appear to be so if one doesn't look carefully. And then he talks about his lihya, his, his beard, and the rest of his face and his body. We'll leave that to next time, insha'Allah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in our love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us love him so much that we take him as a role model in everything in our lives, that we prefer him over anybody else or anything else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us his companionship in Jannah. Ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.